Well, hello, everybody, and welcome again to the latest episode of Entre News, our recurring series here at Nifty, the network for teaching entrepreneurship, featuring some of our friends and supporters and stars of the Nifty ecosystem. I'm very pleased to welcome today Dr. Alex DeNoble, Professor of Management and Entrepreneurship and Executive Director of the Lab and Entrepreneurship Center at San Diego State University. Alex, welcome. I think it's a pleasure for me to be here with you. You are a professor, a scholar, an entrepreneur, and now author of the new book, The Entrepreneur Within. And Alex, your book focuses on entrepreneurship, as I understand it. That is using the entrepreneurial mindset within the framework of a corporate organization. Tell us a little bit about that. Why do you think that's important? And tell us more about the book in its, in its fullness. Well, I mean, um, I, I always wanted to write a book, uh, um, and, and when I chose my topic for this book, uh, I wanted to pick low-hanging fruit, and the low-hanging fruit for me was um, uh, I have been teaching corporate entrepreneurship at uh, three universities, my home university in, in San Diego, um, at Setis University in Mexico, and um, Alto Executive Education in Helsinki, Finland. And in each of these contexts, um, I was working with uh, people in their existing careers and talking about how they can behave entrepreneurially inside of their organizations. So um, having had those experiences and some consulting um, activities with Qualcomm, with uh, Siemens Corporation, um, uh, with San Diego Gas and Electric, I realized that uh, companies are re literally reaching out for people inside that, that uh, can innovate in their own organizations. I imagine that's important because businesses need new ideas and new mm -hmm. thinking in order to move forward, particularly in highly competitive business environments. Is that what you heard when you talk to companies about why entrepreneurship is, is so important? You know what? I mean, I, that's exactly what I heard. And it has been exacerbated by um, recent events. Um, uh, in the book, I divide I literally divide up the time frames of what life was like pre-COVID, what life was like during the shutdown, and um, and now in a post-COVID er era, um, how has the environment changed in terms of consumer behavior, in terms of workplace behavior, and in terms of the different technologies that are are facilitating um, very very disruptive activities to traditional business. So uh, I felt that it was really important to get this book out now while companies are trying to figure out what the new normal is going to look like. We often said at Nifty during the pandemic that the pandemic itself forced all of us to be entrepreneurial thinkers because part of what we talk about at Nifty is components of the entrepreneurial mindset are pivoting and persevering, you know, problem solving, uh, you know, um, anticipating challenges that come up along the way and dealing with them. And all of those skills were, were we were all doing them, just not just in workplaces, but in our daily lives during the pandemic. And so do you, do you, do you perceive that the pandemic um, really shifted some, some um, ways of thinking within companies that, oh. um, that now companies are trying to figure out what do we retain from that? Without a doubt. I mean, look at what we're doing right now with this uh, with this kind of an interview and our comfort level in doing an interview like this via via Zoom. Um, and I have to be honest, um, uh, I have been slow to adopt emerging technologies. And before COVID, I was um, uh, I did a little bit with Skype um, and I just saw Zoom as a really tough learning curve to learn how to use it and uh, uh, never had that inclination. 
until we got sent home um, in the middle of a semester and then had to learn how to use it. And then all of a sudden it has become an integral part of our work environment. And look at how it's changed behaviors. And, um, you know, that's, that's just one technology. Um, as we look at things like chat GPT right now and um, uh, other emerging artificial intelligence and machine learning, we look at robotics, we look at um, what's happening in virtual and augmented reality. Uh, it is literally disrupting the status quo uh, of how we used to conduct business pre-COVID. I'm so glad that you brought up AI and ChatGPT and all of these tools that have been so much in the news every day these past yeah. six months or so. I am coming to this interview today from Chicago. I'm making the rounds of our mm -hmm. regional competitions, our business plan competitions. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I was curious to see was whether our high school and middle school learners would be coming up with um, business ideas that incorporated AI tools and whether they were using AI tools to prepare their business plans. And we've had three regional competitions so far where we'll have seven in all domestically. And the answer to the two questions I was wondering about are yes and yes. So just last night, I met a young man who has a business idea that's around, it's a mental health app is what it is. Mm -hmm. And it utilizes GPT-4 basically as talk therapy for people who might not have the resources to pay for uh, a psychologist, but who need some, some, some sort of, <laughs> excuse me, who need some sort of um, resource. And so not only does his business idea center on an AI tool, but in preparing the business plan and the mock-up that he had physically presented at this expo last night, that was also done using AI tools. And so um, what's your own view about these tools that we're talking so much about these days and what companies need to be thinking about? Clearly, they're, yeah. they're wondering what to do. They're grappling. Is this, good? <laughs> Is this bad? Is this yeah. going to disrupt things? Is this going to be additive? What's your own view? You know what? I mean, um, I think it's absolutely critical that our students uh, become comfortable with these emerging technologies. But what's interesting, the natural tendency uh, for administrators at least is thinking of the fear factor. In university systems, the big concern is, okay, so are students gonna be using this to find ways to get around assignments and things like that? And so, I've seen some movements in, um, in, in the education field to, to ban things like chat GPT. So it's, to me, it's almost like an ostrich sticking its head in the ground uh, because this is, this is a wave. And I think it's absolutely critical that our students get exposure um, to these emerging technologies and learn how, how they can be used because um, this is going to be their future. And when they come out, I mean, at least from NIFTY's programs, from our programs, we want our students equipped to be able to be value-added players um, in the economic environments that they find themselves in. And this is, this is not going away. Yeah, I often say our our students point the way for the adults. And uh, at Nifty, what I'm picking up is that the students are saying, these tools are here, we're using them, they're helpful. So adults, uh, you know, better figure out how to incorporate this productively into what it is that we're doing. Alex, I'd, I'd love to, to hear more about what you have learned from your students teaching them over the years. I know you're retiring soon from mm -hmm. teaching full-time at San yeah. Diego State. Congratulations. You've had you. a 40-year you. career as a professor. I imagine you have learned many things from your students over the years. What, what is one key lesson you've learned from your students teaching them? You know what? Um, it's, it's having to stay current with them. Um, because my students come into our programs um, uh, very technically savvy. And um, uh, they're, 
they're pushing the envelope with me, which has enabled me to have an exciting 40 year career. It hasn't been boring in the slightest because every time I come in, um, our students are, are pushing the envelope on new technologies and um, how to use them. And uh, they, they desire to be exposed that way. They're also pushing the envelope in terms of their desire to engage in social impact. Um, you know, to be to be part of a community. Uh, they our students volunteer to uh, work with uh, local small businesses in underserved communities and so forth. Uh, but you know, this desire to make a difference and the desire to uh, understand how technology is going to affect their future and the realization that um, they need to embrace it as part of their education and preparation. Yeah, once again, I can validate the, what you see in your classroom uh, in our work at Nifty. So last night, just to take one small example, yeah. we had eight businesses pitch. Um, nine students, eight businesses, mm. and seven of the eight um, had some social responsibility angle to them, whether it was um, a, a, a social problem gave rise to the business idea, or there was a component of the business that was about giving back, or that it was just a social purpose organization as a business. So I think you're absolutely right that the the younger generation, the students who come up constantly are, are thinking about the problems of their world in a in a very thoughtful way and yeah. in an idealistic way, wanting to solve them. Now, I know you've had a long history with Nifty too. So uh, tell uh, our audience yeah. a little bit about where, where you first encountered us and, and what you've done with us over the years. Well, I've... Um, uh, I encountered Nifty back in the late 1990s um, uh, when I was part of the uh, the Symposium for Entrepreneurship Educators, the C program sponsored uh, by Babson College. And um, uh, uh, the faculty lead at the time, Jeff Timmons, uh, introduced us to a guy named Steve Mariotti. And Steve was uh, uh, just getting the, he was talking about this program he was doing in uh, the inner cities in New York City. And uh, uh, so at that point in time, I met Steve and that was unbeknownst to me at the time, uh, seeing the seeds of what Nifty is today. And so I was really privileged for that. Now, Steve and I haven't really connected since then, unfortunately, but um, about a year ago, I was at a conference, uh, I was at the Despande conference in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, and that's where I met Kenny Turner, and we're having dinner, and he said, I'm from Nifty, and I said, I know Nifty, and reflected back on my time meeting Steve, and um, that led to uh, conversation. Kenny and I then toured the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame together and um, built up an instant friendship. Um, and that has led to uh, our first engagement here at San Diego State and Nifty. Kenny mentioned that he wanted to uh, bring a group of high school students, part of the Nifty program, um, to San Diego State. And so we created and we just had a program here that we brought a group of high school students, and with my relationships in Mexico, we brought a group of students from uh, the Tijuana area, and we did this cross-cultural event as part of our um, um, engagement activities with Nifty and um, um, some of my other contacts in uh, Mexico. So that's, oh, that's been really fun, cool. and we launched it, and we launched it as a pilot, and we hope that this pilot, which was really successful, can lead to uh, more enhanced activities with Nifty. You know, your engagement, Alex, 
touches on so many facets of who we've been and who we are now. So I've, I'm sure most of our viewers here know Steve Mariotti's name, but for those who don't, that's our founder. That's the man who who uh, brought Nifty into being. And today, you know, we've grown from that New York City-based program some 36 years ago to now mm -hmm. being in 30 states across the country and uh, and 24 countries around the world. And Alex, your example um, speaks to our global work. And of course, your setting speaks to our post-secondary work, which is something that we hadn't done in the past, but that we are doing more of now. And Kenny Turner, the colleague who you referred to, is the leader of that endeavor. Well, as we wrap up here, um, do you have a, a favorite quote or or a message that you'd like to leave our our viewers with? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought I uh, thought about that, and um, uh, boy, I've got so many quotes from the book um, because it was all interviews with entrepreneurs innovating inside uh, of organizations. But I have one right here. Uh, from a woman named Alyssa Thompson, who innovated a new program uh, in a medical organization. And when I asked her how she was able to get the buy-in from, um, from people that she needed within the organization to support the effort, her response to me is, it's simple. You just have to uh, first, be able to kick ass on your day job. Um, and, and I really enjoyed that because part of my message in terms of getting buy-in inside of a company um, is, is building your credibility first. Uh, that credibility leads to trust. And when you have trust and credibility by by kicking ass on your day job, uh, the rest comes when you're ready to innovate because getting the buy-in is so essential. Some good wisdom there. And I'm sure the book is filled with many, many nuggets of wisdom. Where can our viewers purchase The Entrepreneur Within? Oh, well, thank you. Um, I have a website. It's called um, uh, theentrepreneurwithinbook.com. Uh, but there is also a link on that website to Amazon um, to much easier uh, go to Amazon and in the search button, just put in Alex DeNoble and it'll take you right to the entrepreneur within. Fantastic. Well, thank you for writing it. I look forward <laughs> to reading it. And I'm sure that many of many of our audience members will do the same. Sounds like uh, a great addition to my summer reading list for sure. So right. Alex DeNoble, Professor of Management and Entrepreneurship and Executive Director of the Lavin Entrepreneur Center at San Diego State University, author of the new book, The Entrepreneur Within. Audience, pick it up. I know you'll like it. And thank you, audience, for joining us as always for our latest episode of Entre News. This episode concludes our latest season, and we'll see you before long for our next season of Entre News. Alex, thanks again. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.